Breaking news here on HQ. An era has ended in college football. Another one on the horizon as Nick Saban is retiring as Alabama's head coach. He has been there in Tuscaloosa for 17 seasons, winning six national championships. He has won seven in his career. Uh, but Tommy, look, his career spanning way before that. He's been coaching now for 51 <laughs> years, dating back to 1973 when he was a GA at Kent State. Of course, looking to the future, now who replaces Nick Saban? According to Dennis Dodd, these are some of the names you're going to see. Dan Lanning, you saw him there. Uh, he was at Oregon. He was on the national broadcast for the national mm -hmm. championship game. Sark at Texas. Kalen DeBoer, who of course did great things during his time at Washington. Dabo, who has been looking after this job for quite some time. Lane Kiffin right now at Ole Miss. All of those candidates for the now vacant Alabama job. Let's welcome in college football insider Dennis Dodd here. Dennis, uh, Nick Saban retiring. We've been able to talk to you about that. Looking forward to the future of Alabama. Talk to us about this coaching search, how it's going to go down, some of those potential replacements you talked about. Yeah, no, and man, I've just this has just been settling in with me. And, you know, you immediately go, well, who's going to replace him? There are hundreds of coaches who would want to be replace them, but who are the realistic choices? And if you're at the top, the very, very top, do you want to replace them? There's an old saying in the coaching profession, never be the guy to follow the guy. I have one name for it. You remember Ron Zook? Who did he replace at Florida? Steve Spurrier. You know, you're never going to live up to that legacy unless it's a super, super situation. Alabama has that situation, but we're talking about a guy who won seven championships, six at Alabama, competes for a title every year in an era, Amanda, where it's going to be harder than ever to win a championship in the expanded playoff era. You may have to win at least three, maybe as many as four games to win a championship where that's the only standard at Alabama. There's about five schools where that's the only standard. So I think as we go through these names, yes, I think Dan Lanning would have to take that call and he could not be blamed by the Oregon fans who are still upset at Mario Cristobal for going back to his, you know, his alma mater, Miami. This isn't Dan Lanning's alma mater. It's his, you know, a school he was once a GA at. DC at uh, at uh, at at, at uh, uh, Georgia, where he won, won a national championship with Kirby. I think you've got to call him. I think Lane Kiffin's going to be in the mix. Um, yeah, I don't think Steve Sarkeesian. I think we have his name on there because he he's probably the best result, the best graduate of Nick Saban's halfway house. He's taken in these broken coaches who had something go wrong in their career, fired, personal problems, whatever, and they come out better for it. But I think he's got it pretty good at Texas. Now, I might be wrong. He might take Alabama at this point, but I think he's got it pretty good having gotten to the playoff this year and headed to the SEC. Kalen DeBoer, maybe a bit of a long shot, but 25 and three, and three in his first two years at Washington, or got to the playoff this year, obviously. And then Dabo. Dabo's the interesting one. We know Dabo wants the job. There was a, oh, about a year ago, December, I want to say of 22, where there, where there was this event or right in the middle of recruiting, uh, I was told Dabo showed up and everybody was kind of surprised because Nick was there um, and it was to honor Nick. It was something like that. And I went, wow, that's really weird. Clemson's head coach came over here. Now, we know that he was a one-time receiver at Alabama, but all signs lead to him being interested. I don't know at his point in his career with, let's face it, Clemson declining from where they were. It's not to say they can't get it back that he will be a top choice at Alabama. So this is going to be interesting as heck. There's the, there are those who would take it. Who really, really wants it? Dennis, I, I'm curious because you mentioned talking to Nick Saban. Uh, I believe it was at the Rose Bowl or just throughout the course toward the end of the season and how content he was that this could potentially be his swan song. I'm, I'm curious, and this is pure speculation, maybe how long he'd been thinking about it. Does he get a say in who replaces him there? Does Alabama maybe have somebody already in mind to step into his shoes? Well, if you're Greg Byrne, the athletic director at Alabama, you've got to have that short list in your back pocket. If you're not, you're not doing your job. And he's had, look, more than 10 years, I think he's been AD there, uh, getting ready for this day. So you better believe he's reached out. And don't forget Jimmy Sexton's role in all this. The super agent uh, with CAA, he's had Nick forever. I can't remember a time when he didn't have Nick. And so Jimmy Sexton is the most powerful agent maybe in 
altogether sports, but certainly college sports. Well, he will be pulling the strings on this. He will make sure candidates whose names are even mentioned for this job, because they are being mentioned, will get raises. That's a great uh, tactic of Jimmy, and I'm not even criticizing it. It's the way he does business. But he may have one of his candidates in here. I think you would probably, you know, make that make that case. I think Dan Lanning is a uh, actually Dan Lanning is not a, a Jimmy Sexton guy. Um, I believe he's with Clint Dowdle now, who left CAA to go uh, to go out on his own. But Dabo is, um, Sark is. Um, so I, I think there'll be two tracks here. I think they've got their names at Alabama, but Jimmy Sexton, Super Agent Jimmy Sexton, will be a big part of this. Dennis, is there any name in particular that you think really stands out to you among those? I think Dan Lanning. I think you, he's got to take uh, he's got to take that call. He's young enough. He's accomplished enough. Um, you know, Oregon. You know, almost won the Pac-12 this year. They had they beaten Washington one of those times. They might have been in the playoff. I think there's so much upside there. He knows SEC recruiting. He knows how to how uh, SEC coaching. He knows the, the culture there, and I think that might be one of the first calls they make. And I think he can't. I don't want to say he can't turn down the job. He will definitely take the call. Dennis, you, you mentioned Dennis. the standard for Alabama is national championships. The standard for Alabama fans is winning a national championships. And fans, once they get over the shock of not having Nick Saban anymore, they're going to want to know what is the future of our football program. It, it, the transfer portal window now for these players, they're open for another 30 days, trying to bring in the right coach. Look, Alabama got close. They didn't get all the way. They're not sure necessarily they have the right quarterback there. What do you speculate over the next season or two to see as far as Alabama in their success in college football? Well, for all of the SEC, Texas and Oklahoma just joined. Um, as much as they're going to have to get used to things in the SEC, uh, you know, the price of winning just went up in the SEC with those two programs and what they've accomplished. So it's going to be harder. It's going to be harder in the playoff. There's another factor that is at Amanda with the NIL and what the NCAA is going to be. Is the NCAA going to even exist? You know, I think this next coach who takes over the job certainly will be, live in an era where we have a pay-for-play model, and the pl the players will either be in a union or pay-for-play or perhaps both, and schools and conferences will be sharing money with players. And I think that was one of the key ingredients to Nick Saban's career. He was able to adapt in 2014 when he saw his teams being beaten by spread option teams uh, with the rise of Clemson at the time. He went out and hired Lane Kiffin, you know, who was one of the best at coaching the spread. Uh, remember the name Blake Sims? He was a former converted running back or receiver. In 2014, Blake Sims set the then total offense record at Alabama and off Alabama went on that run using the spread with Tua, with some of the other quarterbacks, with Bryce Young. Um, and I think because that, that'll be one of his great uh, you know, things they talk about him, his legacies at the end, his ability to adapt. This next coach is going to have, have to have an ability to adapt, unlike anything Nick Saban faced. You mentioned some of those names right now of guys in the NFL uh, that played under Nick Saban. Think about just the talent that he has turned out there, the Hall of Famers, the players that are now in the NFL and retired. Dennis Dodd, we appreciate it. And, and mentioning the reaction this is now getting across the sports world, some tweets are starting to come in. This one from Coach Prime. Mm. Wow, college football just lost the goat to retirement. Wow, I knew it would happen one day soon, but not this soon. The game has changed so much that it chased the goat away. That's a curious statement right there. College football, let's hold up our mirrors and say, honestly, what do you see? So putting a little controversy and into Nick Saban stepping they've away. They've done commercials together before. I wonder that if there's going to be true. some type of retirement goat spoof, which would be interesting yeah, for next season. Maybe if, right. if they've been chatting there. Uh, Mark Ingram, who of course played at Alabama from 2008 to 2010. Coach Saban is the goat. Thanks for believing and a young man from Flint, Michigan helped me become a champion on the field, but more importantly, a champion in life. Enjoy retirement, coach. You earned that. Love you, Coach Saban. Roll Tide. That again coming from Mark Ingram. We're going to hit a break here on HQ, but when we come back, the guys at the Cover 3 podcast just got done taping an emergency pod. They'll be joining us next with what was the dominant conversation there.